The upper section of a high power rocket is where most of the difference lies between a low power rocket such as a Nestus kit and a high power rocket like this Wildman kit. The upper section starts with the avionics bay which is a large coupler here. Then we have the vent band. This is called the payload tube. This is where the main parachute is going to sit. And then at the top we have the nose cone, nose cone shoulder, and the bulk plate. The avionics bay also has metal bulk plates in this case and uh, we'll get to those later but I want to start with construction on the tubes. Here's the avionics bay tube and the vent band that goes with it. Before I glue the vent band onto the avionics bay there's a few things I need to do. First step is I'm going to take some sandpaper and just lightly go over the edges on both sides of the tubes and then I'll very very lightly break the edges with a little bit of sandpaper so I don't cut myself on the fiberglass. There we go. Now I'll just break the edge of the vent band here very lightly with a little 320. I don't want to make too big of a radius on the outside of the vent band because the idea is that the vent band will be flush with the booster tube and the payload tube. The idea here is just a very, very tiny radius to prevent me from cutting myself while handling the fiberglass. There we go, and I'll do the same with the avionics bay tube. To position the vent band on the avionics bay tube here, I need, first need to select which end of the tube is going to be the downside and which is going to be the upside or the forward end. This is important because I need to have at least one caliber worth of tube to slide into the booster tube because this section is going to be free sliding and so I need to have enough stability. This is the main break point of the rocket here. So in this case the rocket's four inches in diameter so I'm just going to make a mark that's four inches from the bottom of the booster tube right there. Now what I'm going to do is set the vent band into position and I'll just add a little tape to hold it in place and I'm going to run a tape ring all the way around the bottom of the vent band so I can slide it right into position when I add the epoxy. With the tape in place and the vent band in place I'm just going to make some marks here with a pencil. This will give me a guide on where to sand the avionics bay tube so I don't sand too far outside of that. If I do, it's not the end of the world since the avionics tube is actually a coupler and it'll be sitting inside, so I'm not going to be painting that area. But this will give me a nice place to start. Because the tolerance is so tight between the vent band and the avionics bay tube, it's possible with epoxy you could just push the epoxy out as you slide the vent band to position instead of getting epoxy between the vent band and the avionics bay tube. So what I'm going to do is get, take some 60 grit sandpaper and really rough up the inside of the vent band and the outside of the avionics bay tube to make sure I get as much epoxy as possible between the vent band and the tube. Alright, I've already sanded the vent band. I've just sanded the outside of the avionics bay. So I'm just taking paper towel with some alcohol on it, clean up the fiberglass dust, and we'll be ready to glue the vent band into position. Now I had mentioned that the tolerances between the vent band and the avionics bay tube are pretty tight. So because of that, I'm going to use Bob Smith epoxy to glue the vent band onto the avionics bay tube. Bob Smith is a bit thinner than rock epoxy and it will be easier for it to wick in between the two tubes. So I'm going to mix some up and then set the mixed cup next to a heat lamp to help thin out the epoxy a little bit more. And then we'll uh, glue on the vent band. With the Bob Smith epoxy mixed up, I'm just going to spread it nice and thin around the avionics bay tube. Try and get an even coverage out of this, although once I put the vent band on, I'll be twisting it around to spread out the epoxy as even as I can. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of epoxy on here when I spread it out, 
But like I said, because the tolerances are so close, this will be plenty to get all the, uh, all the coverage I need onto the tubes. Okay, with the epoxy in place on the avionics bay, vent band slides right over. I'm just going to slide it right in position, right up against the masking tape. There we go. And you can see that some of the epoxy has stayed on the outside. So that's good. I'm just going to twist it as much as I can here before the epoxy sets just to try and get a little more even coverage out of it. There we go. Nice and tight. I'll just let this sit here for a minute. Then I'm going to clean up the excess epoxy with paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. Finally, before the epoxy sets, I'm going to remove the tape here. And then I'll clean up whatever epoxy remains. The avionics bay is held together with two bulk plates, one on each end, with quarter 20 all thread running all the way through. On the quarter 20 all thread will sit a sled, and that will hold my altimeters. So I need to drill the bolt plates, and there's three marks already given by a wild man, and that's to use a regular nut and a forged eye bolt that comes with the kit. What I'm going to do instead is use my personal preference, which is a quarter inch U-bolt, and on one of the ends, I want to be able to close the avionics bay using a wing nut. Unfortunately, the holes given for me don't provide enough tolerance for the wing nut to fit inside the tube. So I'm going to have to mark some new holes and drill them, which is not a big deal. I've set the spacing for the wing nuts at uh, one and a quarter inch from center. That should give plenty of room uh, for the wing nuts to clear the sidewalls. So what I'll do is I'm just going to mark those two locations, like so. and I'll be able to drill those holes out and those will be the new holes for the all thread. Planning ahead to set up my U-bolt, I could set the U-bolt at 90 degrees to the all thread, but then I'll have just a little space for my charge cans on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll angle the U-bolt holes 45 degrees, which will leave plenty of space for a charge can on each side on the other side of the uh, bolt plates. So I'll set the spacing and do the same thing, mark the holes, and then drill them with my drill press. After drilling the holes in the bolt plates, just grab my deburring tool Go around each of the holes a little bit just to take the sharp edges off. To attach the U-bolt, first I cut the U-bolt down to size so I don't have extra threads sticking into the avionics bay and just adding weight to the rocket unnecessarily. I mixed up a little bit of JB Weld here and I'm using this because this is going to be a permanent connection. Just add a little bit of JB Weld to the threads on the top of the U-bolt. And then we'll put the nuts into place. Alright, once the nuts are in place, I'm going to add a little more JB Weld to the bottom of the threads. And 
and we're going to stick the U-bolt through the holes. Finish adding JV weld to the threads. And then I'll put the bottom nuts on. Once those are in place, I'll tighten them down. And with the nuts tightened down, I'll just add the last little bit of JV weld right up here on the threads to help lock them into place. On the top side, I just want to wipe off any extra JB weld that I see. It's especially important to avoid any sharp edges because the JB weld dries hard and if there's sharp edges, then it could uh, dig into the recovery harness or into the wires for the electric match. So you don't want to short out, you don't want to lose your chance to ignite the charge for separation. To finish the bolt plates out for the avionics bay, I need to drill holes for the charge canisters, the terminal, and the wire pass through. So I'm going to do two sets on each bolt plate since I'm running two altimeters and each bolt plate uh, needs two sets of, of charges. One on the top for the main and one on the bottom for the drogue. So I'm going to get to work drilling the holes and mounting the uh, charge canister and the terminal. This hole here is for the wire pass through. The terminal is where the wires from the altimeter go into and then on the other side is where the electric match wires go into. And of course the charge canister is where I put the black powder for the ejection charge. So I've got my holes drilled in the bolt plate. I've got my charge canister, my terminal, and the uh, pass-through hole right there for the wires. Now with the pass-through hole, I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, but I deburred it far enough down to actually make a little bit of a countersink and that'll help prevent uh, chafing any of the wires that are passing through here. So all I need to do is do this uh, again on the other side of this bolt plate and then uh, do the other bolt plate and that should uh, take care of the avionics bay for now. I still need to make a sled for the electronics and mount the electronics uh, inside the avionics bay, but I'm going to cover that in a later video just on the electronics. I've added the recovery uh, hardware attachment to the nose cone bolt plate here. There's a couple different ways to attach the bolt plate into the nose cone. As you can see, the coupler for the nose cone needs to be glued into the nose cone. And what I could do is glue the bolt plate into the coupler like that and then run a fillet of epoxy on each side. What I prefer to do when setting up a rocket like this is cut my own centering ring that's going to go above the coupler. That way you have the strength of the glue of the centering ring in the nose cone as well as the coupler holding that centering ring in place. And then the bolt plate is actually screwed onto the coupler. What this or screwed into the centering ring. What this allows me to do is it allows me to take the uh, bolt plate and remove it and have access into the nose cone in case I want to add nose weight or add electronics into the nose cone. I have that option to remove the bolt plate there. So that's what I'm going to do. I've come up with a measurement for the outside diameter of the coupler. It's 99 millimeters across and I've set up my fly cutter. So I'm going to start by cutting the outside diameter and then I'll adjust the fly cutter to cut the inside diameter, which I figure to be about 60 millimeters. This will give me enough room to install my T-nuts on the centering ring here. With my centering ring cut out, all I need to do now is drill four holes for my hardware, and then I'll attach the bolt plate to the centering ring, make sure everything fits real nice, and install the T-nuts onto the centering ring, and then we can glue the centering ring and the coupler into the nose cone. Okay, after some cutting and drilling, I have my centering ring now and the bolt plate is drilled for the bolts. So you can see that the centering ring is going to go inside the nose cone and I'll be able to screw the bolt plate into position using my bolts. Before gluing the nose cone coupler into position, which will turn it into a shoulder, I wanted to see how much would be exposed. And when I put the coupler all the way into the nose cone, I'm only showing about uh, three inches worth of shoulder exposed. And I'd rather have four inches with this being a four inch diameter rocket. So what I'll do is I'll mark the sh uh, coupler here four inches up from the bottom and then I'll run some tape around so I know exactly how far to insert the coupler. Then I'll sand 
the top of the coupler that will see the epoxy as well as the inside of the nose cone. Then I can glue in the centering ring and the coupler. Okay, so I've added the tape and I've uh, sanded the uh, coupler here and uh, cleaned off all the fiberglass dust with a uh, paper towel and some denatured alcohol. I've gotten the uh, centering ring in position here and I've got the blind nuts on the top and what I've done here is I've added some uh, some masking tape over each of the blind nuts here to prevent any epoxy from seeping into the threads while the epoxy is curing. The bolts that I have are obviously longer than the nuts but they'll be able to push right through the uh, masking tape even if there's some epoxy on it after the epoxy is cured. But if the epoxy goes down into the threads then I'm pretty much done. Also, I don't want any epoxy to end up making a fillet inside the coupler, between the coupler and the centering ring. So what I've done is I've actually super glued the centering ring onto the coupler here. So when I push the centering ring into the nose cone, none of the epoxy getting smashed in there will end up going through the seam here and creating a fillet on the inside, which would uh, give me issues trying to get the uh, bulk plate on. So I'm going to make up some, mix up some uh, Bob Smith 30 minute epoxy here, just once again because it's thinner and it'll be able to flow easier between the nose cone and the coupler. And then I'll push the coupler into position. Okay, I've got the epoxy mixed up, so it's time to glue the coupler into the nose cone. I should also mention before I glue the coupler in that I took a screwdriver into the nose cone just to check the solidity of the screw holding the metal tip into position. I was going to add some, some Loctite, but when I unscrewed the screw a little bit, it felt like it was already Loctited. So I just screwed it right back into position, and it's good to go. I can always access it after gluing in the coupler. It's just easier without the centering ring in, in the way. So it shouldn't take a whole lot of epoxy, but I want to try and get it evenly spread around the base of the nose cone. And remember, once again, I'm going to put it inside the nose cone and not onto the coupler. So when it smears, it smears further in and not outside onto the coupler where I don't want any epoxy to sit. I heated up the epoxy, which allows it to flow a little easier, which is great, but it also makes the epoxy set faster too. So I need to Try and work quickly here, even though it's 30 minute epoxy, at the temperature that I brought it up to, it's going to be less than 30 minutes before the epoxy sets. With the epoxy in position, I'm just going to take the coupler and insert it into the nose cone here. Nice and easy, and just twist a little bit as it's going into place to help evenly spread that epoxy. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit, then I'll remove the tape down here. Looks like I got just a little bit of epoxy on my gloves, which ended up up here on the nose cone. Not sure if you can see it there. So I'll just grab a paper towel and some alcohol and wipe that clean. After the epoxy cured in the centering ring inside the nose cone here, I'm just going to add the screws to the bulk plate. I'll throw some thread locker on them. They also have a split washer and a regular washer to help distribute the load and keep the screws nice and tight against the threads. I'm not anticipating having to put any uh, nose weight in the nose cone here just because the rocket's so long it should be plenty stable, but I can always remove the bulk plate if I need to to add nose weight. So I'll just screw the bulk plate into position and the nose cone should be pretty much ready for uh, paint prep. Uh, the only thing I'll need to do other than get it ready for paint is just drill the holes for the shear pins. And that's pretty much it for the nose cone. To finish the payload section and upper section of the rocket I need to drill four sets of holes. There's going to be a set of holes up at the top where the nose cone is. Those will be the shear pins for the nose cone. Then I need to drill a set of holes here between the avionics bay and the payload tube. And those will be my rivet holes. I'm going to use bolts, but they're basically uh, permanently installed for the flight. They're not designed to shear. Then I need to drill a set of vent holes in the vent band for the altimeters to function inside. And finally, two more holes between the avionics bay and the main body tube and those will be the shear pins for the drogue chute. What I've done to get started here is I've run a straight line up the uh, payload tube here just so all my holes will line up nicely and I taped together a couple pieces of paper here wrapped them around and drew a mark right where the uh, right where the paper meets here. This gives me my circumference of the body tubes and so I can make marks 
depending on which hole I need to, to drill or where I need to line up the paper. So I'll get started with the with the rivet holes here between the avionics bay and the payload tube. Since this is the uh, the back line, the back of the rocket where the rail buttons are, I want to make sure that my bolt doesn't protrude up into where the rail is. So that's why I have a, a 1 6 mark right here. Then I'll be using the, the thirds all the way around for three bolts to hold the avionics bay to the payload tube. So I can see where the uh, avionics bay ends. It's right about here. And I'm just going to make a mark just a little bit further down. I want to keep it up high because I want to keep the bolt heads away from the from the uh, static ports to have clean air going into the static ports for the altimeter. So I'm simply just going to line up my paper here and find where the one-third marks are and just make little marks for the rivets. I've just drilled the third hole between the payload bay and the avionics tube. So right now I'm just taking my uh, my bolts and I'm just threading them right into the fiberglass. This is just to hold the two sections together for now. When I'm done drilling holes here, I'm going to come back and enlarge the holes just a little bit and I'm going to install these blind nuts on the inside of the avionics bay. So I've drilled the rivet holes between the av bay and the payload tube and I've got the screws securing the av bay in position right now. I've also drilled the vent holes on the vent band for the av bay and uh, to get the right size I just checked the instructions for my altimeter and they recommended uh, 3 16 inch holes. So three of those around the per perimeter of the vent band. I've also drilled a little vent hole inside the payload tube so that excess pressure doesn't build while the rocket is ascending. So the last set of holes to drill will be two shear pins for the nose cone. I've decided to go with two instead of three because I'm using two on other rockets with about the same weight nose cone. It seems to be working pretty well. And then I'll drill one shear pin hole between the av bay and the booster tube and that'll help prevent uh, drag separation while the rocket is ascending as well. So I've marked the location for the shear pins on the nose cone and what I've done is I've marked one pin about an eighth of an inch higher than the other pin and that's so I know uh, which hole to line up the, uh, the nose cone with. Otherwise you may get two holes that are really close to each other and think you got the right hole and then come around to the other one and it doesn't line up properly. This way I can just spin the nose cone around and know exactly which hole is the right one because the only way that it, this is going to line up is if each hole lines up properly. So I'll get to work drilling these. I'm going to put the uh, payload tube vertically so the nose cone is sitting down nice and straight drill my holes and tap them for the shear pins and then I'll put the av bay on the booster tube and do the same thing for uh, the final shear pin. two shear pins installed. Each shear pin is a number two nylon uh, screw. It takes about 30 pounds of force to shear the screw so that nose cone is going to stay on nice and tight until the actual ejection charge separates the nose cone from the payload tube. I'm going to start with one shear pin between the upper section and the booster tube and we'll see how the, uh, how the ejection tests go and if needed I'll add a second shear pin. But I think one shear pin should do the job pretty well in this rocket. So I'll just uh, drill the one and uh, tap it and that should be it for uh, drilling holes in the rocket for now. Alright, so there's the one shear pin installed. Give the mic tube a little tug. and There's a little bit of play in there but all I'm really trying to do is prevent the two sections from separating during the coast phase of the flight. I think one shear pin should do the job pretty well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the shear pins, pull the pieces apart, and it's time to get ready for paint prep and paint.